Well, I had a dream. I stood beneath an orange sky. Hey, Mom. Merry Christmas. I miss you so much, and I really wish I could be there. Um, when I first started teaching, I remember I made you a short video, um, and I know that you're just starting to get into yoga, so I am going to make you another video. Um, <clears throat> for this practice, it's going to be about 20 minutes long, maybe a little bit shorter, depending on how much time you have, um, but just do what you can, and um, just wear comfy clothes, whether it's like worker clothes or baggy clothes. Um, now what you're gonna need for your practice today is a blankie, <coughs> a blankie of any sort. Um, doesn't have to be anything fancy. So a comfortable blanket. And then I'm using a bolster, which looks like this. But you just need a couch cushion. All right, so something that's pretty firm and pretty big, all right? Um, so let's get started. space in the house. Um, that could be the living room where you have a little bit of cushion, you don't need a yoga mat, um, just some carpet or anything that you can sit on comfortably. <clears throat> and then uh, our first pose, or how we begin practice, is by sitting on our blanket. All right, so I'm going to fold the blanket over twice, so it's a nice tall cushion just like that. Um, and then I'm going to come to sit on top of this. And a few options with the legs, you can cross the legs, and you can come into like a butterfly position. You can just stretch the legs out long and let them chill. <clears throat> or any kind of sloppy variation, no big deal there. Um, if it's not comfortable to sit up like this, I want you to come onto a chair and just make sure your back is nice and tall so you're not slunched up against it. Um, or you can sit on the edge of the couch. And then what you're really looking for, whether it's a couch, a chair, or this blanket, is I want you to pull your butt towards the edge so you're sitting up nice and tall. So most of your bum is going to fall off the edge. And then your hands are going to rest on top of the knees, maybe in a lap here. All right. And just really wiggle yourself around until you find a place where you can just hold still for a moment. All right. And just keep the elbows loose by the sides, shoulder blades <clears throat> kind of round down and back. And when you find this place where you feel like you're grounded down, like the hips are pressing against your seat and the spine is tall and reaching. See if you can close the eyes or just soften the gaze. Good, and then just begin to soften the belly, the muscles in the sides of the waist. Okay, and then to start practice, we just take a few rounds of breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. So take a big breath in. Exhale, let the breath pour out. ourselves noticing what showed up. Two more. Big inhale. And take one more. Alright, from here, just continue to breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. Take your right hand to the low belly and take your left hand to heart center and just spread the fingers wide and then you're imagining that these fingertips kind of little suction want the heart space and the belly to soften into the palms. Okay, in through the nose, out through the mouth. And you might notice the breath, and it might be short, maybe just breathing into the collarbones to start. But let's see if you can begin to find a little bit more length. So as you breathe in, the low belly expands, maybe the ribcage comes as you exhale, you feel this kind of pulling inward, then up with the core. And I like to call it this coaxing of the breath lower and lower. And on the next few rounds of breath, begin to close the lips. So you're breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. to arrive onto the mat. It also allows us to kind of become witness 
just tell what she maybe how I'm feeling today, maybe what's up with the body, maybe the quality or the pace of the thoughts. You know, we're not judging, just kind of bearing witness to. And we're using whatever we find to guide us in our practice. <clears throat> Five more rounds of breath into the nose, out of the nose. This time I want you to draw your gaze, your internal gaze, to your third eye point. So the place between the eyebrows, inward then up. And you might notice the eyes are fluttering beneath the eyelids, but really focus the gaze. The gaze in our practice is super important. Right? It draws us into the present moment. Right? Take four more breaths. Steady gaze, soft face. Good, big breath in. Exhale, empty out. And then release the hands, just slowly blink the eyes open. All right, if the legs are crossed or in any position, you might just wiggle them out for a moment. <clears throat> and then you can uncross in the opposite direction, or you can keep them out spread nice and light. All right, so we're just gonna warm up the side bodies. And take a big breath in, we'll take the right hand, reach it off to the side, bend the elbow, and take the left hand, sweep it up and overhead. The palms are going to face down towards your face. Okay, and then I want you to close the eyes or find a soft gaze and drop the head. All right. Soften the belly muscles. And take a few rounds of breath right into that rib cage. And then what I like to do is find almost the seated movement, moving forward and backward. And you're really going to pull through the fingertips. Right. Warming up the side bodies, the spine. Finding more space for the breath. And then come back to center. Take the top hand, reach it away from you, palm facing down. All right, so the hand's gonna come directly away from the shoulder blade. All right, head is gonna stay heavy. I'm gonna breathe a few rounds of breath into the neck. And if it feels good, you can bend the elbow and reach behind you. All right, fingertips are gonna point down towards the tailbone. All right, find two more rounds of breath. Big inhale. Exhale. One more. All right. Slowly stretch the left fingertips down towards the ground and come back up to center. All right. Take a moment, pause, and notice the difference between both sides. Now we'll take the left hand reached away from you. You can find your tip fingers here. Bend the elbow. Both hip bones stay rooted down. And the right arm sweeps up and overhead, palm facing your face. All right. Drop the head, drop the skull. Soften the belly. Right. And you're gonna find the most deep, even rounds of breath. And if you wanna add those movements, maybe reaching forward with the fingertips, pressing up to the back of the heart, you can reach back, open the chest, and right, whatever you need here. And then we'll make our way back and take that right hand, reach it away from you, palm facing down directly away from the shoulder blade. Keep the head heavy here, two rounds of breath. Option to bend the elbow, reach behind you, fingertips point towards the tailbone. All right. And slowly make your way back up through center. Good. Now we're gonna take the hands, reach in behind us, so you can stay in your seat. All right. Cross the legs, up to you. And you can find your tip fingers here again, or maybe your fists. All right. We're going to puff up the chest towards the sky. We're going to let the head fall back. Just be careful of the neck here. And I want you to take three or four rounds of breath underneath the collarbones. So you can really balloon up the rib cage, finding a little bit of extra space. This can even be a more active pose by pressing against the hands, reaching tall to the crown of the head. And let the head drop back, maybe. A few rounds of breath right into the throat. All right. Relax, exhale. We're going to roll back through center. And then grab onto the tops of the knees. If you're sitting down, you can grab onto the behind the thighs, too. It's a great option. All right. You're going to pull the chest forward. And then as you exhale, round the spine in, draw the chin in towards chest. And I want you to really puff up the back of the heart. 
So whether you're pulling on the tops of the knees or behind the thighs, you're really adding a little bit of pressure here. Right? Draw the chin in, maybe close the eyes here, and take three or four rounds of breath. You should hit the back of the heart between the shoulder blades. Slowly come back to center. We're just going to take a gentle twist to each side. So take a big breath in, both arms deep up. And as you exhale, twist to one direction. All right. The front hand can pull on the knee. Maybe just grab onto your hand here. And then see if you can evolve the gaze back behind your shoulder blade. Inhale, sweep up, come back to center. And exhale, twist to opposite direction. All right. Front hand pulls on the knee. Ease comes back behind you, spine stays nice and tall. All right. Take a deep breath in here. Alright, and exhale, slowly come back to center. Good. So we're gonna move on to hands and knees, tabletop position. So you can roll yourself over. If you're sitting in a chair or on the couch, just come off. Um, this is where our blanket's gonna come in handy. So we're gonna unravel the blanket. <clears throat> so it's about that way long, long enough so that our hands and our knees can rest comfortably. This is so uncomfortable to strap in their blanket. Okay, so it's gonna work like that. Right, so we're gonna come into tabletop position. And first, let's just stretch out the wrists. So flip the palms to face up towards the sky. Okay, I'll do it from this direction too. And then you can just rock forward and backward. And maybe do some figure eights. And then when you feel satisfied there, I really like to come onto my fists. Okay, do the same thing. Getting into certain poses, it's really important to warm up the spine. So we're going to work a little bit more to add a little bit of heat, also get more into the side bodies. So move back into that neutral spine, spread the fingers wide, and make sure the knuckles are rooted into the ground. You're going to press against the palms, all right? Hips are directly above the knees. And then find a soft gaze, or close the eyes, and begin to move through your cat cow. So what that means is as you inhale, the belly's going to drop, tailbone lifts, gaze comes up. As you exhale, you're going to round the tailbone towards the heels, press against the palms, chin draws in. Inhale, drop the belly, lift the chest, lift the gaze. Exhale, round the spine, draw the chin in, drop the tailbone, use the brush of the palms. Right, find two more at your own pace. Okay, so you can move really slowly, you're finding these big waves on the spine. And then you might begin to notice that intuitively you might want to move side to side. All right, so I like to wrap the tailbone left and then right. <clears throat> and see how you can involve the uh, base of the tailbone and involve the head. All right, so it's a full, long side stretch. All right, come back to center. Now walk the hands out a little bit further. We're going to create some hip circles. So we're going to move the hips forward and then press the hips back towards the heels. Big circles. So all the way over to the right hand side. Let the hips press down. Left hand side. Hips press back. Right. And there's no right or wrong, wrong way to do it. Don't really worry about what it looks like. It's more about just working up the hips. You can reverse if you haven't already. Right. And then a little bit of warmth in the core. And just keep the face soft, the jaw soft. All right, smooth rounds of breath. All right, and then slowly come back through center. Walk the hands back into that tabletop position, neutral spine. And then we'll take the right leg, you get that along behind you. All right, and the hips are going to stay square, so make sure one hip doesn't pop up. Hips stay square, even pressure against the palms. And then I call this fire engine. We're going to bend the knee and create some circles in the knee. the low belly tucked in, in and out, breath through the nose, switch directions if you haven't already. Right. And then keep that leg long behind you, this time the toe will touch down, and you're going to press that heel back into the calf. If you want to add more here, press against the palms, shift the weight back to the heel. Right. Find three rounds of breath, in through the nose, 
out through the nose. Take that foot, and you're going to cross it over the left hand side, so it crosses over the left foot. And I'll move forward so you can see. Either the top of the foot or the toe will touch down. And you're going to inhale, bring the gaze forward, lift the chest. As you exhale, press against the hands, bring the gaze over towards that foot. All right, big side body stretch here. You can drop the chin to the chest. And you're going to find three rounds of expansive breath. center and then you're going to take that leg and bring it away from you and turn to face and so it's directly away from the hip the toes are going to face towards the front of the brown right. the right foot's out the left knee is directly underneath the left hip both hands are planted underneath the shoulder blades nice and safe all right take a big breath in as you exhale hold here maybe try pressing the hips back towards that heel right. you're going to find a stretch to the bottom edge of the hamstring maybe the bottom of the calf you can hold here if that feels good. Right, coming against your edge, a place where you can still breathe, but you find sensation. Or begin to rock forward on the inhale. Exhale, press the hips back. All right, two more, inhale. Exhale. One more, inhale. Exhale. Good, and now go back to center. We're gonna come into a front twist here. Right hand plants down underneath the forehead. Left arm sweeps up into space. All right, shoulder blades stack. Take a big breath in. With the exhale, thread that arm through, come onto the back of the left shoulder blade. All right, so that leg's gonna stay outstretched. All right, right hand can stay near the face, palm planted down for support. It might reach forward, yogi's choice here. But coming into a twist, just getting heavy in the shoulder. Keep the belly nice and soft. Alright, slowly unwind, come back through center, plant both hands down. Yeah. And then we're going to take that foot back. Right. Take a cat cow to wash it out. Inhale, lift the chest, lift the tailbone. Exhale, round the spine. Okay, let's take it to the opposite direction. This time the left leg will reach back long behind you. And bend the knee, create some big hip circles. And pull the low belly in so the back stays nice and flat, nice and neutral. Just kind of lubricating the joints, get rid of everything warmed up in the legs. And then take that leg, keep it back long behind you. The toes are going to plant down. Okay, into the calf here. Once again, if you want to add some heat, press against the uh, fleshy part of the palms. Right. Come back to center. Take the foot, cross it over the right hand side. Top of the foot of the toe will touch down. Take a big breath, and expand the chest, look forward. As you exhale, press against the hands, bring the gaze over towards that foot. Big side body stretch, creating as much space as you can on the left side body. Right. Even pressure against the palms. All right. Then three more rounds of breath. Come back through center. This time, take the left leg, reach it away from you. Toes are going to point towards the front room. And make sure the whole foot is planted down, right? You don't want to be on the side edge of the foot. Whole foot plants down. And then make sure the heel is in line with the hip. And then the right knee is directly underneath the right hip. Both hands plant down, make sure the blades take an inhale, look forward. Exhale, press the hips towards the heels. And you can drop the head. Maybe pause here and move into a vinyasa. So all that means is for adding breath and movement. So moving from one pose to the other, forward and backward with the hips. And you notice if you can begin to sink the movement with the breath. And this is what makes it a almost a moving meditation. Right, take one or two more rounds. And the next 
head now come back to center in neutral spine. Left hand moves so it's directly in the forehead. Right arm sweeps up towards the sky. Right, try to stack the shoulders here. As you exhale, thread the right arm through and under. It's called thread the needle. And you're gonna come onto the back of the right shoulder blade. So really drop the head. Maybe the temple rests down. And we start our pose here. Getting heavy in the shoulder, softening the belly. And that left foot is really anchored and rooted down. And you can hold here using the left hand of stability. Maybe it reaches forward, a little bit of extra stretch here. Once again, get heavy, stay soft. And we find three big belly breaths. All right. Left hand plants back down, and then come back up, neutral spine. Take the left leg underneath the left hip. Take a cat cow, wash it out, inhale, lift. Exhale, okay. round. All right, now we're gonna push back into one down dog just to get off our knees. All right, so spread the fingers wide. And you want your pointer fingers to point forward. Keep the knuckles rooted into the ground, slight bend to the elbows. Right. You want the outer arms rotating down and in. Right. And we'll curl the toes under, and it's totally up to you kind of how your body's built depending on the distance between the feet and the hands. For some, you might want it short, for some, it might be a nice move higher. Right. But we're going to press the hips up towards the sky, drop the head between the elbows. Right. And I want a really generous bend to the knee here, so almost like a low squat. Right. Bring the gaze back between the knees. Once again, press it in, so root the knuckles down. You're going to find length at the sides of the waist. is that the belly can kind of soften towards the tops of the thighs and the sit bones are going to root up towards the sky. So we begin to soften the heels towards the ground. Soften, soften the space between uh, the shoulder blades. And for some people it might feel really good to find some movement pedaling on the heels. Shaking the head yes and no. And then from this down dog, I want you to find a weave through the spine. So as you inhale, kind of propel yourself forward into a high plank. So top of a push-up. And we're going to pause here. Take a peek at your fingers. They're spread nice and wide. And the pointer finger knuckle is rooted into the ground. Outer elbows are rooted in towards the sternum. All right, then rock the weight forward to the ball down to the feet. Press the tailbone towards the heels and lift the navel towards the spine. All right, then draw the chin away from the chest, big breath in. Here, then exhale, lower the knees. Bend the elbows in towards the ribcage, lower the chest. All right. And then take each leg, draw that nice long behind you. And then the arms come out in front, create a nice soft pillow here. Heels fall apart, toes come together, and pause. Flip the cheek, opposite cheek comes to rest. And slowly come back through. And if you still have a blanket underneath you, it should be on the ground now. I want you to roll up the front part of your blanket, just a little bit, nothing too intense. <coughs> and so it's gonna look just like that. And that part of the blanket is gonna go between your belly button and your pubic bone, so your low belly. So move yourself forward. Now we're gonna work our way into three belly down back bends. And belly down back bends are really good for digestion. They're really good for strengthening and stretching our low back, which helps support um, all of our limbs and our neck and our shoulders. Um, and they're also really good for energizing the whole body. All right, so the first one is going to be six poles. And take your arms, put them down, elbows are directly with the shoulder blades, fingertips are spread wide. Okay, then I want you to actively draw the shoulders down and away from the ears. Legs are long behind you. All right, and then soften your belly onto the roll that you created and drop the chin to the chest. Right, once again, ears pull away from the shoulders. 
And you might feel like this isn't a quite active posture. So begin to spread the fingers and then grip the fingertips into the earth and draw the chest forward and through. And keep the belly soft onto the roll. All right, and five big expansive breaths. So the legs, the glutes, nothing is holding. Everything below the waist is nice and soft. And your belly is kind of relaxing and softening over the roll. All right, and three more rounds. Good. Now we're going to keep the blanket where it is, cross the arms out in front, heels fall apart, toes come together, rest the head, and your belly softens over the roll. And then we're using the breath to circulate any of that energy you created. Let's come to the second one. This is going to be a, kind of a supported cobra pose. We're going to take the hands up by the rib cage, so below the chest. Spread the fingers wide, and then tuck the elbows back. Right. Keep the chin drawn towards the chest, gaze to the tip of the nose. And this time we we'll use the legs for a little bit more activity. If the roll is uncomfortable here underneath you, just move it up to the side or unfold it. Yeah, it be a little too much. Yeah, it feels better. Okay. So draw the big toes together, heels together, two legs, one leg, and a big fish tail. Gaze the tip of the nose, take an inhale, press against the palms, lift the legs. Yeah. And then see if you can release any pressure against the fingertips. Pull the elbows back, reach the chest forward, but the back of the neck stays long so the chin draws in. And right, three rounds of breath here. And you're looking to find length forward rather than height up. Good, one more. And then exhale, release, big toes come together, heels fall apart, nice soft pillow, keys to one direction, soften the low back. And it completely release like a mini shavasana here. All right, moving into our last one. This time I would suggest unrolling the blanket if you haven't already. And then take the hands nice and wide. All right. <clears throat> now I like to find the fingertips here. Legs are long behind you, and then we're going to find a moving of a nyasa cobra. So as you inhale, you're going to press the fingertips, lift the chest. As you exhale, dip one shoulder blade in. Gaze comes over the opposite shoulder. Inhale, come back through center. Exhale to a soft subtraction. And take two more each side. Inhale, look forward. Find a little bit of height, a little bit of length. Exhale, dip and roll. All right, full round of breath. Use the head. Keep the legs nice and soft, the glutes soft. One more. Last one. Alright, come back from center. And then as you lower down, find some length, cross the elbows, opposite cheek, heels fall apart, toes come together and soften here. And from this position, you press against the hands, tuck the chin. And then, like slow mo, um, press the hips back towards the heels. And just take a moment in this child's pose. All right, so you're going to feel a decompression in the low spine. Reach the fingertips out long, keep the elbows lifted. You're going to tuck the chin so that the ears are between the elbows. All right. Then, rock forward, come into tabletop position. And from here, we're going to come into a supported child's pose. All right, so you need your blanket underneath the knees to protect the knees. And then you're going to grab onto your bolster. <clears throat> and for you, this bolster might look like a couch cushion. That's totally okay. All right, so draw the knees nice and wide to the outer edges of the mat. And you're going to pull the couch cushion slash pillow slash bolster between the knees. Right. Here might be a really good place to grab onto the 
bottom edge of the blanket and place it on top of the heels. Okay, so if you find some pinching in the knees, it's a good place to add a little bit of support. And you're gonna walk the hands forward, try to lengthen out the spine, and then kind of drape the torso over the bolster. Okay, and you're gonna turn one cheek to rest. Okay. And then the arms, they can come out in front, maybe palms face up. And they can tuck underneath the bolster for more support. Or they can reach back along behind you, palms facing up. Okay. And the key to these supported postures is to move around as much as you need to. All right, just shifting the heels, hips towards the heels. All right, wiggling the torso, finding that good comfy space where you can hold and sustain a posture for about a minute or so. All right. And you want the props to be of support to you. Right, so make sure that they're nice and comfortable, everything's pulled in nice and tight. And the elbows, the hips, the heels, nothing is holding you up. Right, everything is relaxed and softened. I'm going to move my elbows off to the side. And then the second part of our restorative pose, so just find some deep, full rounds of breathing. It's okay if the mind begins to wander. Right, that's all just part of the practice. Each time you notice the mind wandering, you're just going to try not to hold or grasp onto any of the ideas or the thoughts. So no investigation. You're just like a cloud in the sky, just watching it pass without judgment, without attachment. But just knowing it's going to happen. And then come back either to the breath or any sensations in the physical body. Right, and then let's slip the cheek bring the opposite cheek to rest. Lift the torso, lift the chest. Okay. And then move the bolster up to the side. Alright. And then come out of this pose, turn the knees together, cross the ankles behind you, and then just roll over, find your seat. Alright. And then from here, we're gonna take that blanket and fold it up one more time. Okay, so it'll be like that. And this might be good enough. Maybe you're gonna do it a third. I'm gonna take it into a third. Alright, so it's gonna look like that. Pretty fat. All right, so let me go towards the top of wherever you're sitting. And then to begin, we're gonna come flip ourselves around. And so our right hip is gonna come next to uh, our pillow or our couch cushion. Right. Feet are gonna plant down, grab the hind thighs, take a moment, expand the chest, look up. And as you exhale, round and fold in. You can use the elbows to come all the way onto your back. Right. And you're going to position yourself so that the blanket is underneath the skull. Okay, so she should feel really supported there. And then just check in, just untuck the shoulder blades. Okay. I like to pick the tailbone up, press against the heels, move the hips two inches over towards the left hand side. And then take your right leg, stretch the right leg out long, drop the left knee in towards the chest. Okay. Interlace the fingers, grab on top of the thigh. And this is an active pose, we're going to pull the knee in. Right. And then take the knee over towards the left armpit, avoiding the rib cage. Right. Really good for digestion. We find two rounds of breath. We're going to balloon the belly out on top of the thigh. Right. And then take the knee, you're going to guide it across the body and come into a spinal twist. Right. So for a supported spinal twist here. Right. I'm going to pick up my hips and move my hips over towards the left hand side. Okay, so if I was to look down my body, my heel, my hip, my chest, and my head are all in one straight line. Okay. And then two options here. Arms move much to a T, nice and wide. Good chest opener. They can bend at the elbows for these goddess arms. 
Now for something more restorative, you're going to take the left shoulder blade and draw it in. All right, and we're going to grab a hold of this pillow we created and place it in the palms. Right, it's almost like you're spooning the bolster. Right, it's still a twist here. Make sure your whole leg is resting on the bolster. Right? So if you want to push it down a little bit, the foot should be supported too. Right. And you decide what your body needs. So it might be something more restorative, like this. Right. Or maybe it's a little bit of opening, like this. And wherever you are, you take the first few moments in a pose, and you scan the full body from the fingertips uh, to the toes. And you make sure everything is supported and held. And then let the lips swallow, clear the throat. Alright, soften the belly. And then imagine that the shoulders can roll away from the ears and the eyebrows away from the third eye. Your way into stillness here. And the only thing moving is those deep lines of breath. And we're going to find five more inhales and exhales. And we're going to use these breaths to wash out the spine. Right, so inhale, low belly expands, your cage comes wide, chest lifts. As you exhale, a little bit more uh, effort here, pull the navel in, right, squeeze and twist. Right, so you're imagining you're bringing out the spine, inhale. Exhale. Three more. Two more. Last big breath. Alright. And then slowly unfurl, come back from center. Both legs stretch out long. And the best way to come into the opposite side is to take your pillow, drag it across the body, and over to the left hip. Alright. And then to start, draw the right knee to the chest, interlace the fingers, palms place two inches below the top of the knee. And you're going to take the knee, draw it over to the right armpit, so you're avoiding the rib cage. And tuck the elbows in, drop the shoulders, hold in nice and tight, take two rounds of breath here. Alright, take the knee, draw it across the body, come into that spinal twist. So the full leg is supported onto the bolster. Maybe you'll lift the hips up, shift the hips over the right hand side, create some more space there. And then yogi's chest, arms and come out wide to a T. That feels good. We're going to roll, peel in the left shoulder blade or the right shoulder blade, excuse me, come back in, rest the head, create a nice soft flow there. And then same thing, we scan the full entire body. Right? Notice where you can soften, where you can let go, use a little bit less effort. Stillness, draw your awareness to the inhales and the exhales. And then take those five more big breaths, drawing up the spine. Full inhale. Two more. Biggest breaths that you've taken all day long. Right. And slowly and wind come back from center. Good, stretch both legs out nice and long. Okay. And we're going to come into one final pose, and it's an inversion. So what that means is the pillow can stay underneath the head or you can move it off to the side, it's up to you. I'm going to keep it underneath my head. And I'm going to plant my feet down and then make sure my feet 
as close to my hip bones as I possibly can. Okay, just for this one. Now plant the hands down. Okay, and lift the hips up. Okay, it's called bridge pose. Great option here is to tuck the right shoulder blade under and the left shoulder blade under so you're popping the chest up straight up toward the sky. And then I want you to relax the glutes, press against the heels, pull the knees in, and then imagine that the legs are shooting towards me. Okay. Now soften the back of the heart, soften the throat. Okay. Concentrate on taking five more rounds of breath. Okay. Ballooning up the belly into this big space. shoulders, plant the hands down, and a slow spine roll all the way back down until the tailbone touches. Okay, draw the knees in towards the chest, and grab behind the thighs, and then take a moment and rock and roll side to side. And from here, we're going to come into final relaxation for about a minute or so. All right, so stretch the legs out long. And the feet are going to come as wide as like a starfish. All right, toes are going to fall apart, heels stay in slightly. And then press against the head, lift the shoulders, and relax them back down. Lift the hips, tuck the tailbone under. And the arms can come out to the side, palms facing up. Right. If you want to add some layers, maybe take your pillow, I like to place it over the belly. Helps to ground you down, go ahead. Right. But move everything nice and wide. Okay. So the armpits are open. And tuck the chin. And Shavasana is a great place to pause. It's often said to be the hardest posture there is. It's working on our ability to do nothing. It's a really nice kind of pause to thank our bodies for showing up. Also helps us to kind of soak in and see in our practice. to wander and kind of out of your body, out of the space. And just kind of notice where the mind goes when you slow down. If you notice any stories you're telling yourself, that monkey mind gets a little strong. Just open the lips and exhale out through the mouth. Come back into the body, taking it out. Exhale. Right, wiggle the fingers, wiggle the toes. And to reach the arms overhead, you can grab hand to hand or elbow to elbow, and then just soften here. And then I want you to notice any differences from when we first started. So notice any extra space in the breath. Maybe notice the pace or the quality of the thoughts. Notice any energy, maybe tingling, or the heartbeat in the physical body. Good. Now reach a little bit longer through the fingers, spread through the toes, the women in the hands. I like to scrunch up the face, the jaws, stick out the tongue. <sighs> All right. And then roll over into one hand side, draw the knees in, and then slowly press your way up on the seat. And from our seat, we just close. Any sort of seat, so hands to heart center, elbows wide, press the thumbs into the sternum, drop the chin, take a big breath, inhale. 
Hands at the right point. And we bow and say Namaste. Love you, Mom. Yes, I had a dream. I stood beneath an orange sky. My brother standing by With my brother standing by I said, brother, you know, you know It's a long road we've been walking on It is, you know it is Such a long road we've been walking on